Hello, in this video we're going to install a virtual machine on OpenShift 4.6 and I have 4.6.3 installed right now. Uh, I've already got the virtualization uh, engine running. If we look at uh, installed operators, well let's go to Operator Hub first. Type in virtual and you'll see OpenShift virtualization. Select that and click install. And then once it's installed you can go to installed operators, select it and then I went to uh, OpenShift virtualization operator deployment and deployed an instance of it there, uh, which shows up here. And there isn't a lot of uh, information in this uh, file, just the spec is the version number and apply some labels. Okay, so once that's up and running, uh, we're presented with a virtualization uh, status indicator and we can uh, start from there to build our virtual machine. Uh, but we do need an environment to run it on. Uh, typically you'd run virtual machines on bare metal. Uh, I'm gonna be running it in uh, VMware, so it's a nested virtualization, which means for me it's gonna feel a lot slower than it would be normally. Um, so what I mean by nested virtualization, if you're not sure what that means, is I'm already virtualizing the nodes um, for the OpenShift cluster on VMware. And now I'm going to be virtualizing a VM inside of an already virtualized node that's then on top of hardware. So there's multiple layers of virtualization and translation that it has to go through just to get to the VM. Uh, so again, it's it's better to run this on bare metal. But if you want to test it out, um, which is what I want to do, uh, you can definitely install it uh, like it is now uh, as a nested virtualization. However, we do need to set up our environment. So if we go to my VMware vCenter, I have four workers. Uh, two of the workers, uh, I have uh, just normal workers. So if we look at uh, the CPU, you can see that the hardware virtualization has been disabled. The other two workers, these are where the VMs would go. Uh, you can see that the hardware virtualization has been enabled. And if you're not sure where to go to do that, uh, it, let's select one of these guys. So we'll right click here. The machine does have to be off before you uh, enable CPU virtualization. And then you can go to CPU, and then here you check this box for exposed hardware assisted virtualization. Once that's done, uh, you'll be able to run um, VMs uh, on those nodes. Okay, so uh, the other prereq for me is I need a way to get uh, the ISO uh, exposed as a disk into the VM as I build it. So I threw up a uh, quick web server, it's just hosting uh, some ISOs for me, and we'll be fetching a Microsoft. Uh, server ISO and installing uh, Windows Server 2019. Um, all right, so let's get started with that. We can go under workloads. You'll see a new option here, virtualization. Select that, uh, create a virtual machine. I'm going to do this with the wizard. And then we can do kwindows. Okay, we'll have a kwin2019. Uh, there we go. Operating system will uh, be Windows Server 2019. And yes, I want to mount uh, the ISO, and we'll select uh, the server ISO here, copy link location. And paste that in. And then flavor is a uh, medium, you do custom as well. Let's take a look at what this is. So it's memory and CPU, uh, and then the workload profile. So we could say uh, four gig of memory, um, Actually, let's do, yeah, that's fine. Four gig of memory and uh, two CPUs. And then uh, workload profile is server and then click next. Uh, our NIC, we're gonna be bonding it to the pod network, which is fine. Next, okay, so this gets a little uh, confusing. It took a little while to figure this out. So because I'm loading an ISO, the root disk, I need to edit that. So we'll edit this because it's an ISO here. Uh, root disk is fine. Um, the size doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure I have enough space. Uh, SATA, we're going to do CD-ROM. And then storage class thin, which would be my vSAN. Um, and that's it. So really, I need to have this uh, situ situated. So it'll scan the CD-ROM so we can load the driver. Click Next. And then I need to add a disk for the oh, operating system itself. So we have 45 gig. Virto disk thin, that looks fine. Next. And yeah, good. Next. Uh, I don't need to add any information for 
this is H keys or anything that all looks good we'll start the virtualization on creation and click create go to details and then we'll see that it's going to start importing the ISO and we select here we'll see it's creating two disks <clears throat> uh, the first one will be just the uh, uh, like a scrap or a uh, temp disk that it'll create and then the other one will be the uh, root disk and then we'll, it'll also actually create the disk for the operating system. So if we look at uh, uh, storage, persistent volume claims, um, we'll see that we do have two disks. In fact, we have the uh, C drive. This will be the C drive. And then we have the, um, the boot disk CD-ROM being uploaded right here. OK, let's go back to virtualization. And we can see that it's importing. And this is going to take a little bit of time, so I will uh, be right back when it finishes. OK, so uh, the, we completed uploading the ISO, uh, started the VM. We can see that it's running now. Let's just click console, and there we go. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and get this installed. And we'll say install now. Okay, uh, no key, let's do a demo. And we'll say desktop experience. That way we have a UI. Accept the terms, next. Uh, custom, and you see there's no disk here. We need to uh, load the driver from uh, the temporary disk that was added. So we'll just say yes to browse or to search for drivers. There's a uh, uh, disk, uh, virtual I.O. disk that's uh, added to the install. We can see here Windows 2K19. So this is what we need. And click Next. There's our disk. So next. And of course, uh, this is going to take a little bit of time too. So uh, I'll be right back. Uh, what's going to happen is it's going to um, copy all the files in. It's going to uh, start the installation process. And once it gets done, it'll uh, automatically set itself to reboot. And it'll reboot and come up and then we'll be able to uh, continue from there. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're at the point that uh, everything's installed, it's installing some updates, and uh, it should finish up here in a minute and then reboot. Okay, it's restarting. Okay, let's finish up our install. Let me give it a password. <clears throat> Go 
finish. Let's get us logged in. Okay, let's go ahead and log in. Uh, send key, control delete. And we'll log in as administrator. Here we go. load the guest tools. You can see there's no network or anything. I need to load the drivers. So this PC and the Virto. And we'll scroll down here to uh, guest tools. And double click on that. install next accept next Now we've got our uh, network driver loaded. Okay, finish. Great, close, and let's just close these windows and make sure we can get to the internet. There we go. So we know that uh, networking is working. And we have a VM, so at least we can egress from this uh, virtual machine. And I don't think IE likes this. Uh, let's try a different browser here. There. All right, so you can see we can get, uh, access the internet. And if we look at it just briefly at our system here, let's see we have the uh, Windows CD still mounted, uh, our op local operating system believes it's a C drive and the Virto tools are still there. We can probably eject those and probably eject this. Okay, so there we go, uh, nested VM. Uh, that we can play around with in OpenShift Container Platform. Thanks a lot.